See, nothing is impossible when you listen to Home Wizards. No. It's all possible. Can, it's all doable. It's, it's a, all there. Within your reach. See? Yeah. It's the dream. Well, it's, it's home and life improvement. <laughs> That's what it is. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, and uh, you're listening to Home Wizards, where we love to improve your home and improve. Yeah. Your life. Yeah, that's, that's all right. that. So, you know, we're planning for the new year, and there's so many things that you can do to kind of feel like you, um, just like you're changing up, you know, your own personal goals, we're changing up where you live with a whole fresh start. And one of the things that I think that, that is really important to do is, well, what would you say is one of your favorite things is in terms of making a resolution for your house? For my house, I think it's, well, for me, I have specific resolution. I have the shutter that was destroyed by the frequent missed passes uh, and the ball hitting the shutter, destroying it. So now I have one shutter on the right of my lower window and then no shutter on the left with a big white square, which is the old color of the house paint. Mm. So it's just so glaringly obvious that something's wrong. So I have to now take that one shutter down and put two new ones on. So that's my resolution. Because you, you can't just have one new one and one old one. Because it'll be the wrong size. Uh-huh. You know, I, I know I, I think the thing was custom made in the 40s and, it, and there's just no way I'll find something like it. So I got to take both of them down. So that's the one. That's, that's my, exciting. Yeah. Well, what about, let's say, if you had to repair the broken garage door or a sticky window you know, we can we can do some of this stuff right now. Now's the time right to now, do it. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think a good a good project for anyone to undertake right now would be to take on a tile floor project. I think sometimes tile seems overwhelming and difficult to do, but it's not that hard. It's basically just you know putting putting these beautiful ceramic pieces down on a floor in a in a nice pattern. If mm-hmm. it's a square pattern, you just want to make sure your lines are straight. If it isn't, then you're going to do some new fancy thing like running bond or something. But it's not that hard. All you need is a good pair of knee pads, a tile cutter, and, you know, the will to learn. And this is the time to do it. And what about those little things that go in between? Oh, those are the spacers. That's pretty, because, I mean, you're a tile guy. Yeah, and that makes it easy. It keeps everything unified tight. and yeah. tight. And, uh-huh. and you, you, the only thing in tiles, you want to make sure that you're starting on a right a real straight line so running a chalk line on your slab first so that you've got a nice reference point and measure you know at the end of the line from one wall to the line and then one wall to the other line you know that that's going to be you know your perfect center line to start your tile on well, I think that before you dive into anything, why not just kind of walk through your place and just make a wish list of the things that you would like to kind of check off in the weeks to come and then you can kind of prioritize what you think is like do it now, and then maybe wait. This is months. your excuse to have a clipboard too. Walk around uh, your house yes. like you're the you know yep. the custodian of the joint. You know. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Geez, we need to. We got to do the trim. There's no problem. No, it, it really does help because otherwise, you know, if you don't have like an ongoing list, at least for me, you forget because yep. weeks go by and you go, oh wait a minute, I meant to do that, and this way it's like all there, and you can kind of plan it out throughout the year. You know what my second resolution is? What's that? Well, you know, somebody drew a. a well, some graffiti on the side of my house oh, a while yes. ago, and then uh-huh. I had to paint a square of primer out over uh-huh. the graffiti. Never quite got around to covering up that wall because I don't have the house color. So now, so now guess what I'm going to do? You're going to repaint the entire house. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know that's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. It's not I just the wall. I won't the be whole able to house. match it. Yeah, and that's going to drive you nuts. It's going to drive me crazy. Okay, and you're going to go with the same color the, or I new color? Know. I do like the color. Maybe yeah. maybe I'll pressure wash the house first and then decide. Okay. You know? Okay. That's also another good thing to do. Pressure wash your house, man. If if it's still snowing and you guys are in an area where it's still freezing cold, obviously you don't do that. But, you know, if it's a little warmer area, this might be a nice time to, to get the house clean and then decide if you even need to paint. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you don't need to because the house is just dirty. Okay. You know? If it is still chilly where you are, or regardless of whatever the weather is, this is a good time maybe to upgrade your home in terms of home automation. And good idea. Talking about, you know, savings. Something like the, something like the Nest? Yeah, the thermostat that's the Nest. I mean, it's a, it's a couple hundred bucks, isn't it? It's, it's not cheap. Well, and you know what you're doing? You're paying for simplicity is mm-hmm. what you're doing. It's an, it's, an easy, it's an easy technology device to master. And I think that it's it speaks a lot to you know that people. I think these manufacturers made stuff so complicated that it was almost like programming a VCR. You know, back in the seventies, it was confusing because there's you know let's have the heat go on at four a.m. At, on Wednesday and three seventeen <laughs> on Thursday. You know, who cares? It doesn't make any difference. 
if you get to a point though where you know I'm not going to be in the house on Thursday and Friday, it's easy to program that, and you can keep the heat off, obviously. So so to look into the Nest. I think it's a pretty cool device. It's also remotable uh, with your phone. It's remote, remotely accessible yeah. by a, an iPhone, yeah. which is great because let's say you forgot to turn whatever programming down or up or whatever, and you're on a trip. You yeah. know, you can you can basically jump in and correct it. That's I love it. that part. Or if you sense you've got a security breach and there's a burglar in mm-hmm. your house, you can taunt them by turning the heat way up while yeah. you're away. We don't want to be comfortable. And then the guys will be like, it's too hot in here. I'm not <laughs> stealing the TV. I want to go now. Get me out of here. Yeah. Now, what about grout and tile? Um, you know, especially, let's say, if in the bathroom or in our kitchen, we need to add some new grout right behind the sink. It's sure. been a few years and somehow it's kind of eaten away and now there's like a little gaposis. Well, if you have if you have gaposis, I would suggest that you get a little grout saw. It's a handheld, basically it looks like a utility blade on a little wood handle, and the blade has uh, a serrated edge to it. So it, it, it essentially can go in there and saw out old grout. To have a clean to take slate. It, yeah, to have a clean slate. Because a lot of times that when the grout's cracked, is there's going to be mold in there and it's oh. black and you can't get it to the right color anyway. Uh-huh. You might as well just channel it out and re-grout it. Okay, and what's the tool called again? It's a grout. It's a grout saw. Grout saw basically is what it's called, and you can get them at any tile store. They sell them at the big box stores too. So sometimes when you have that situation with cracking, that may be the best option because if you patch over cracks, you tend to see the cracks anyway, even though you've got new material in there. Yeah. So I often recommend just trying to get the old stuff out if you can get away with it, though, and it's a white grout. You can bleach it with with bleach or hydrogen peroxide for stubborn stains. That works pretty well. You got to let the stuff, the secret to all this stuff when it comes to grout is to let it sit and keep it wet. And what about matching grout too? Because see, we have an area, it almost looks like it's clear. It's like it's right behind the kitchen sink, right? On the countertop. And it's a really fine, thin little strip. It doesn't look like white, white, white. And, you know, it's it's been about three years, so the existing grout that's still okay has kind of turned probably a, a, lo- a different color. Yeah. And now we're going to just do a finite area, and so whatever we put in is going to go. No. Nah. It's going to be a totally different color. It's gonna, yeah. And so. here's what you can do: almost think of it like faux finishing. So if you if you're artistic enough to be able to mix oh. paint up. That looks close to the color of the old grout. So mix clear with white or mix a yeah, couple. Yeah, oh. I mean, you could kind of do it that way where you're just painting it and feathering out uh-huh. the new color into the old color so that the transition isn't so abrupt. Okay. You could do that. But now paint is not going to stay on grout for 100 years, but mm-hmm. in the interim, it might be a good fix. They also have grout paint that comes in a little, it's almost like, like a, a mini roll-on. Uh-huh deodorant. Oh, de- oh uh-huh. but, it's, but it's got paint in it and uh-huh. it's, it's thin enough to go in the grout joints and you can paint your grout again. So that's another option. So and remember that too that, you know, that whatever you have with that grout, you talked about there being some mold and that being bad, you know, in terms of for the, the health of your home, it's yeah. also impacting your health potentially. That's right. Because, you know, there could be some real bad germs in there all along the grout line. So this is a good time, maybe get some baking soda or hydrogen peroxide sure. and kind of clean that baby up. Up. Yeah, yeah, and and the stuff that's on the you know where the tile meets the bathtub, for example, mm-hmm. a single edge razor blade, and and you start scraping that stuff flat to the tile, and then flat to the bathtub, going back and forth on each surface until you're cutting like a a, a right angle groove in the old caulking, mm-hmm. and then that stuff will usually pull out like long spaghetti. And you can get it in one one yeah, fell yeah. swoop, but you want to take all that out. Then clean then, and then recock. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then good. it'll look brand new. Okay. Yeah. What about adding a little humidity to your home too? Because now that we're still in that time of year where it's, it can be cool at night sure. or and even the in heat the day. Blaring. The furnace is making on. the interior yeah. air quality very dry. Right. You, know, you get you wake up with sometimes bloody nose or uh-huh. you know coughing Sinus. and ha- uh-huh. hacking stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's also a a perfect time 
for uh, you know allergens to show up. You know, if you if you have a ton of carpeting and pets and dander floating around in the atmosphere, if your ducts are dirty, that's really going to just blow and, and create uh, irritation in your respiratory system. Humidity is the you know counteractive ingredients to that. So definitely get a humidifier going in your home. And I'm wondering too, speaking of air quality, if we should just hey, let's just start fresh. It's January. Let's put a a different uh, filter. On our oh, furnace, God because bless it's, you been, for saying that. it's probably been working overtime. You bet. You know, it, has. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't hurt to change it a little sooner. Change it now. Yeah, just get. It's going to make a huge difference. But so between that and the humidity in the house, it's going to yep. really be more comfortable. Anyway, we're all about making great things happen to improve your home and improve your life. Keep it here. We have more fun things to uh, talk about to get your your house, your place looking and feeling fresh. Eric Stromer, Cindy Dole, you're listening to Home Wizards. And welcome back. You're listening to Home Wizards. I'm Cindy Dole. Hey, I'm Eric Stromer. And, uh, you know, Eric and I are both pet people. Eric also has three kids. I have two old English sheepdogs. I mean, no matter what's going on, you know, between Hazel and Jack the Cats, the kids running around. I got spills. I got skateboards, roller skates, basketballs bouncing on floors. You name it. It's 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 My floor gets beat. So the idea is how do we not stress and have the right kind of floor that's going to suit our lifestyle? Yeah. So if you're going to if you're going to invest in a brand new flooring system, you got to ask yourself a couple of questions. Number 1 is pets obviously first mm-hmm. and foremost. Claws, dog flying around a corner, you hear that you know, that's going to scratch a hardwood floor for sure over time, you know, especially in the entryway areas or the kitchen, the high traffic stuff. Do you want to have a hardwood floor? What about you, urine stains, if, too? Thank you. Yeah, I know. That's why I've, I've been wearing a diaper, so thank you. I'm much better now. <laughs> no, I didn't mean that. <laughs> but, but seriously, yeah, that's yeah, bad you, on have the wood. To, you have to be very careful. Also, are you having hardwood in a kitchen and, uh-huh. and right under where my kids get water from the refrigerator? Guess what? The floor is starting to get messed up because it's always wet because they spill as it's coming out of the door. You know, liquids come out of that area. I mean, I mean, listen, every single thing that you choose, there's an upside and a downside. Hardwood floors give you that look and richness and the feeling of warmth. The upside is that it looks great and feels warm environmentally. The downside is that it scratches. It has to be cared for over time. It's going to start to get, you know, dingy and show dirt and scratches. It's and almost like it's for a show house. Like you can't live with it. Yeah. I Doesn't mean, it feel that y- way? Yeah, it does. And, and you know, the only thing for me left to do is to refinish the floor because there's big gouges where the couches were slid and moved and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's it. Now, now when it comes to hardwood, you have two choices. You can either do... Uh, traditional hardwood, which is three-quarter pieces of wood that are nailed to a subfloor or glued to a concrete slab. When you do that, when you glue hardwood to a concrete slab, generally it will fail no matter what down the road. That's the biggest problem because concrete always always leaches moisture. Any adhesive that you put down is definitely going to start to come up as you go through time. If the house foundation gets wet in the spring as it thaws out, it's going to be more wet and more cement will leach more moisture, and you get yourself into a world of hurt with that. If you do, if you do uh, an engineered floor, those are you know quarter inch to three eighth inch laminates that mm-hmm. have you know an artificial base, like usually like particle Pergo. board or something, uh-huh. uh, but. It's got the feeling of it. It kind of huffs up and down as you walk on it because it has like a spongy it's effect. It's got. It almost feels like a gym floor, and some Which people love bad. that. Yeah. I, I actually don't mind it. Yeah. But you really only have, if you have any, there's only going to be one or two refinishings that you can do. Generally, it's easy to install. You can do that yourself in in an afternoon. You can do a, a ten by twelve room, no problem. Uh, if you're somebody that's not, you know, handy, you can probably get away with doing it. If you do the traditional method with hardwood, you've got to clear the house out. They've got to start over, put the new wood, and it has to season for a couple of weeks before it even gets installed. I mean, it's a long, long process. Dust is going everywhere as they're sanding and refinishing. You're going to smell the chemical, you know, finishes that are on there. Uh, a lot of people talk about immune suppression, you know, people in homes that are having a hard time with their immunity systems or they're sensitive to uh, environmental off-gassing inside the house. 
all these traditional old floor finishes are really toxic for some people. So mm-hmm. that's also a consideration. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just went through this with a client who had, you know, allergies to pretty much everything. So there are there are a couple of manufacturers out there that do engineered floors, but they're not using all the adhesives that off gas all the time. Oh, in that's the house. good. So it's more expensive, and you're paying a premium. But there is that option for you out there. Because isn't that off-gassing is like the, for the lifetime of the floor, Yeah, I mean, right? th- think about it. Between the those adhesives that are in wood products and cabinetry to, you know, uh, fire retardants that are in all of our furnitures and, and mattresses and all that and stuff. And carpeting. And carpeting. Mm-hmm. You know, you're living, it can potentially be a pretty toxic environment inside your own home. So... People are really starting to get on the bandwagon of what can we install if we're going to do it new. We might as well get rid of that stuff. We know that cancer rates are soaring. There's all sorts of environmental things that are showing up in our lives. Why not? So so do some research if you're going to pick flooring. Ceramic tile is a good option, but it's cold. You know, it can't really be a family room. It's cold to the so, foot, yeah, and it's, it's cold, cold in, in terms of how it looks. Exactly. Kind so, of. So unless you do area rugs over tile. And it's hard. If you're a cook, it's like probably not great on your back. No, it's not. But they do sell those floor mats, which yeah. I am bound and determined to get yeah. while you're standing there cooking. They're uh-huh. thick. Match, you know, foam mat, mats that uh. really help with your foot cushioning. Uh, so you got your hardwood, you got your tile. There's also cork. That's a really interesting option. Uh, and we're seeing a lot, we saw a lot of that in the 50s and 60s, but this stuff called Mora cork, uh, which can be glued down to any existing floor and it gives you the ability to have sort of a slightly cushioned feeling to the floor. I was going to say, it probably feels a little if bouncy. You, if you've got young kids, that's uh-huh. a re- really good option. Uh, it's impervious to spills pretty much. They've waterproofed it pretty effectively. Oh, really? So they put some kind of a sealant they on it, They put a special huh? sealant on it. So, again, that's a great option, too, to think about. And then there's, the you know, carpeting, wall-to-wall carpeting or this product floor, which right. is something that we talk about quite a bit, where they're two foot by two foot individual tiles that you know sit on any floor system and they can be contemporary or uh, classic in terms of the design sensibility of them. You can change it up if you get bored. So you know that's another consideration. So think about all that before you decide on a flooring system. Or if you had, let's say, a home office or even a family room where you wanted it to be um, impervious to anything, I mean, why not choose a garage flooring material you know, yeah. some of those those heavy-duty vinyl or rubber uh, squares that snap together. It could look kind of industrial and kind of cool. Yeah, sure could. And maybe that would be a great family TV viewing area. Yeah, it could be. Or, or even that sort of modern art gallery look of, yeah. of painted concrete floors. Yes. You know, if you do something like you did in your garage, which is an epoxy paint, that doesn't feel quite as cold as concrete does. It, it for some reason, with the epoxy paint on there, which is usually a two-part epoxy where you're mixing an A and a B together to mm-hmm. create this super paint that doesn't come up, uh, that could be a great consideration. If you've got cracking in your cement slab, that may not look as good. It may not be a brand new looking installation of concrete, but if it's sort of, you know, kitschy and art gallery, Soho looking, yeah. it can work out pretty good too. And I, th- I think especially for a home office or for a, um, you know, family room. Yeah. But let's say that, you know, you don't like uh, the floor that you have, but you want to just do something. Let's say that you're kind of stuck. You can't change the wood floor, or maybe you have a vinyl floor uh-huh. that you've inherited. What about painting? The vinyl floor. Sure, you can. Again, you want to think about that epoxy paint, though, because flooring is challenging because furniture moves, paint chips. Mm, so uh-huh. unless you've One got chair. that, if, if you got the, unless you have that really hard epoxy finish, you're going to probably mm-hmm. be, regret that you did the paint floor technique. Now, think about this too: that epoxy flooring probably will off gas for some time as well. So oh. you know, there's. Like positive we can't and negative win. To all this we stuff. can't win. Maybe just dirt. <laughs> How about that? What about uh, going with like a stencil on our floor beyond painting and stencil the floor itself? Sure, that's kind of pretty. I mean, you're you're laying out. They sell these really cool stencil patterns that are mm-hmm. templated, and you can print them out or you can send away for them. And you just masking tape it to the floor, center it if you want, and then go ahead and paint your pattern. You know, over the existing stencil, pull it mm-hmm. up, and there you go. Voila, a hand painted floor, which can look kind of cool. Or even like a decoupage. You know, with uh, with again some of these templates that are like little 
stick-ons, you yeah. know, if you had an area of the floor that's painted or whatever, and then you add, let's say, some flowers or some little geometric shapes, kind of give a fun little design pop, right? Yep, absolutely. Anyway, we'll put all this on the website, as always, at yourhomewizards.com. Eric Stormer, Cindy Dole, thanks for hanging out with us, because after all, we love to improve your home and improve your life. <laughs>